nothing but winning. Leader fan. Fan Radio Network. Tweet that. Yeah, tweet it. Eat it if you want to. And K-F-A-N dot com. One minute and 57 seconds past the hour of 3 o'clock. That is, of course, Central Daylight Time. We welcome you back to the Bumper to Bumper Extravaganza. On Fridays during the football season, we now refer to it as the Friday Football Beast, and it's going to be a beast today. It is going to be a beast. I am the uh, a-hole in the afternoon. My name is Dan Barrero. Guardsy is the producer. He is back from a short hiatus, and we are delighted that you are along for today's three-hour and, I believe, ten-minute ride, 310 We've got um, a lot to get to tonight, right? We've got Vikings programming. What else do we have? We have Skull Stories right into Game 4 of the WNBA Finals. Outstanding. Uh, game 4, which I will be attending. You were at uh, Target Center last night for the Luka Wolves game. preseason. The, the Luka emergence game. The um, the arrival. Are they calling it the arrival? Well, he, in my mind, he's arrived already. It's just the latest unveiling of the secret The weapon. latest arrival. Yes. Latest of several arrivals. Uh, that's very true. Uh, good lineup today on the Beast. That'll include picks with Gerby at the bottom of this hour. It'll include Ben Gessling at 4.30. It will include Twins apologist Lavelle E. Neal III at 5.30. And even though it's the Friday football football Beast, little added bonus, Tim Conley, the uh, chief brain wizard for your Minnesota Timberwolves, is going to uh, join us probably right about 5.02 this afternoon. So a very full show, probably largely a toy department dominated program as well. But let's be honest about it. Uh, it's Lions Week and the number one story from a sports standpoint inside the Minnesota toy department. It's not difficult. It's not a Rubik's Cube to figure out the answer. It's Vikings Lions. This is a an unusually appealing matchup, historically speaking. Because generally, one of these two teams are down. Often it was tended to be the Detroit Lions. For decades. And uh, now they're real. Uh, they may not win the Super Bowl, but they're, 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 real. they're finally, I think, established as a real, authentic football team. And uh, they come in with a record of, what is it, 4-1? and one? Correct. We come in as still one of two undefeated teams. We are at 5-0. and oh, I see the line is changing. I think we're down to, like, one-and-a-half-point favorites. That's what we're going with. So, um presumably that means some money is coming in on the Detroit Lions. But there's there's a there's a storyline that is starting to bug me. I'm not going to lie to you. It's starting to get to me. And I understand we're all seduced by numbers. And there are some numbers related to the recent history between these two teams that are awe-inspiring. They are dramatic. They are jaw-dropping. They get your attention. And I'm referring specifically to what we've been reminded over and over and over again now that in eight games against the Detroit Lions, the number one receiver in football, Justin Jefferson, our guy, has caught 62 passes for 1,073 yards. And that in the history of the game, I don't believe any receiver has accrued those kinds of numbers Against a single team, any team, not just the Lions, but any team. That's like a season it's, right there, and, and, in half a season. And they're great numbers. I'm not here to tell you they're not great numbers. And then Ron Rosenbaum says, But, does winning matter to us at all? I mean, are we so aroused these days by those kinds of numbers that we say, do we bother even, nobody even asks. Well, did we win the, those games? How many of those games did we actually win? Did you see the game? And did you see the game? Do you remember anything about the game? Because I don't remember every moment in every game, but I can tell you this. If we work backwards from the most recent matchup between the Vikings and the Lions, Jefferson caught 100, accrued 197 yards receiving, and the Vikings lost 30 to 20. Game before that, 141 yards pass receiving for Jefferson. Vikings lost 30 to 24. Game before that, Jefferson gets 223 yards receiving. What? And we lose 34 to 23. In fact, our most recent victory in the Jefferson era against the Lions, Jefferson was not even our leading receiver. 
Your guy, Osborne, was. And as it is, I think he, I think he was like for 73 yards in that game. The game before that, Jefferson gets 182 yards pass catching, and we lose 29 to 27. The moral of the story is this. The four highest yardage totals in those eight games that Je- that Jefferson has celebrated and come up with, we lost them all. I'm not here to say that means you don't throw him the ball. I'm not here to say he can't be a difference maker because clearly he is a a a, a you know a very good player. But and again, the best receiver in the league. But can we get off the numbers a little bit? Do, are we in this for fantasy football numbers? Well, I'm afraid to ask that question. Are we in this to win? And the dirty little secret is, if you look at some of the numbers, I mean, what's killed us in the games where Jefferson has over you know 180 yards here, 200 yards there, is we haven't been able to run the ball against these guys. That 30 to 24 loss last year, Chandler was our leading rusher at 17 yards. 17. Not going to work. And the game after, before that. That we lost by 11. Jefferson gets 223 yards. Cook is the leading rusher. Dalvin Cook, 23 yards. So I, I, I got to tell you, I'm not dazzled by these numbers. They, they don't mean enough to me because I want to win. Who was it who said that? Was it Isaiah Jr. J. J. Ryder? I, I want to win, win, man. That's yeah, all I care that's all about. I care about. That's what we should care about. We're getting way too lost in the fantasy game. This team right now is supposed to be about winning. Right, they're five and zero. They're off to a very good start. No one denies the importance of Jefferson. I'm not sitting here to say again. Well, that let's. What are you saying, Dan? Deliberately lower the JJ ratio. You know, make a point of not getting him the ball like that means you have a better chance to win. No, it's just that all those fancy numbers have not translated, which means other things have gotten in the way. Some of it, by the way, having anything to do with him. Some of that having to do with. Defense. Some of that having to do with wasn't wasn't this one of the games where um, our backup QB the now threw six picks? Didn't he have a six interception game? Sounds right. Uh, just, yeah. So I, there's lots of factors that go into this, but I would just my message to you as a, a veteran ball guy, football guy, is don't get seduced by fancy wide receiver numbers if they're not translating to victories. The you play to win the game. And I, I've just been amused by the number of times I heard it all morning. Same thing uh, uh, on the Friday Football Feast about, look at, I mean, look at his totals against these guys. It's embarrassing. And one of their best of, uh, cornerbacks might not be will, ready to go. And if they blitz against us, we might get, J.J. might end up catching 400 yards worth of, of, of passes. That's great. But did anybody bother to say, well, of those games, how many did we win? In, in the eight games, I think we're four and four uh, against the Lions. And we have lost, as I mentioned, four of our last five against Detroit. So I want, I think the moral is as much as people get tired of me, oh my God, there goes the coffee, tired of me, you know, ranting and raving about the running game or the importance of Aaron Jones, this just underscores it to me. It doesn't have to be Jones, but it has to be what Jones represents. A legitimate threat, not necessarily in just the ground game, but at the position. Because the threat can be catching, it can be Aaron Jones catching the ball. It can be whoever. I think we have to, we, we have, we give ourselves, and even Jefferson, a better chance to not only have good numbers, but to win the game if we are not as one dimensional as we have tended to be. Now, I understand if you're coming from behind, you may have to throw a lot. We get that. And this may be one of those games, too, where the coach says, Dan, I agree with you in theory, but Jones can't go. And I don't know that he won't go. But I'm saying in that eventuality, I'm not going to pound my head against the wall because I don't think I can get the same juice from Tyson Chandler or who's um, who else do we add? Just add Cam Akers. Cam Akers. Uh, I, you know, it's nice depth, but I don't think we can do that. So. We're not going to be foolish. I'm not going to just run for the sake of running if the guy I'm deploying in that position is not as good as what Aaron Jones represents. So I get all of that, 
you can't be stubborn that way either. But I do worry. I always worry about this coach also being dazzled by those numbers. Go, God, that's a good start. Maybe we go for 300 for J.J. Win the game. Do the things that give you the best chance to win the damn ball game. And all these fancy numbers, as I said, his top four yardage production games against the Lions have all ended in defeat. All four. Before we give away some money or yeah. try to, I'll let you know that Aaron Jones and TJ Hawkinson both listed as questionable on the final participation report. Well, we'll, we'll have we'll let Gessling translate that for us at 4:30. So that's the uh, official designation. Okay, good the fan and two men and a junk truck. Want to give you a shot to put a grand in your hand with our national cash contest. First keyword on this Friday is grand. Go to kfan.com and enter the keyword grand. Uh, speaking of the ground game or speaking of things other than fancy receiving totals, it's not, you do not need to be um, Bill Belichick to understand the key matchup on the other side of the ball, right? When the Vikings are on defense. And by the way, there's no question that, in at least in theory, this is a better Vikings defense because you look at. I gave you some of those scores. We were, at, at, on average, giving up 30 points. Uh, although, again, in one of those games, we turned the ball over 22 times. So that also contributed. That, that, that wasn't necessarily the defense's fault. Um, this defense, every reason to believe, is better. No question. What's interesting is that as much as people want to dismiss the ground game, insiders understand that the key to what the Lions run offensively is their ground game. Correct. There's just no getting around it. They Now, maybe not everybody can do it the way they do it. You shouldn't try if you don't have the weapons they do and maybe even the emphasis that they do because they, they emphasize it from day one. And they basically use like eight or nine offensive linemen. They've got two outstanding running backs. They're averaging almost 160 yards a game on the ground. By the way, they've not played great defenses yet, so some of that might be inflated. We're allowing 67 yards a game on the ground. So it looks like irresistible force and movable object, right? Something's going to have to give, and that is one of the fascinating aspects of this game. One of the reasons to look forward to it is exactly that. Are the, are the Vikings as good as that number indicates, or is it we've been ahead in at least two games big to the point where the teams we're playing, including what the Packers – for sure, had to keep throwing the ball, right? Yep. Uh, the, now, I don't think the Jets wanted to keep throwing the ball, but the, the ground, we were so good against the ground, they got almost nothing going there. So um, it's, I don't want to call it a throwback game because receiving yards matter. Um, explosiveness matters. What we call in the business, and you can use this, Garzi, splash plays matter. Yep. Uh, and speaking of splash, uh, splash plays, uh, our guy Mark Craig, the wise old owl, reminds us, do you remember Jamison Williams? I do. He's the guy that we handed, in effect, that Quasi handed to the D- Detroit Lions. 12th pick. Uh, they acquired from us the 12th overall pick in 2023. Remember? Uh, 2022, I should say. Williams is healthy. And have you seen his numbers this year? He's been pretty good, right? Second in the league in average yards per catch at 22.8. Already has touchdowns of 70, 52, and 37 yards. And he's already uh, has career highs in yardage, 365, and touchdowns, three. The moral of that story is, again, it's not just about the ground game. They, too, believe in explosive wide receiver plays, but one absolutely helps them set up the other. I think even with Goff's emergence there, it's fairly clear that he, if you can help it, you'd rather not have him just have to rear back and throw 57 times. That what has made their passing game work is some effectiveness on the ground. Some semblance of balance. So my gut tells me Jones isn't going to play. I hope I'm wrong because I think it's a much better matchup, obviously, with him on the field. Then again, do you want him out there if he's 62%? You probably don't because what is his strength? It's, It's the juice. It's the explosiveness. It's the burst. 
And if he's got to sort of like go at a different speed, then you say, well, then don't, you're probably better off sitting this thing out. But it's an important early season matchup, not because the Vikings can't afford to lose. When you're five and zero, you can't afford to lose. Clearly, you've given yourself a margin for error. It's just such a great opportunity. Forget the latest litmus test nonsense. It's just a great opportunity to take relatively firm control early of the division because then yes. you've got a two game gap on the Lions, um, and you have at least early the so called tiebreaker before you guys you know before you play them in the second game. So. It's um, on that level. It's such an important one that, and it is tricky because you sh- you you should be better than the Rams at this point, right? But it's the old deal of you're playing Thursday night, you're blowing out there, you're you know you're you're traveling out there, you got to blow across the country, and they're not awful. They're still capable on a given night, and you say, but this would be this would be another great game to have in your back pocket in case you get a hiccup, just because you're not going to win them all. You'd rather, frankly, if you're going to split the next two. You'd rather win the division one, right? You'd rather you rather beat would. the Lions at home, and 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 then you know just deal with what might come after that. Well, and I'm trying to figure out: is Jonesy going to be more ready to play or ready at all to play on Thursday? That's, that's a great point. Because and does that affect you and how you evaluate what he does today, or I, I should say on Sunday? Right. I don't know. But the run game point, I mean, you mentioned the word throwback. If you love football, like old school NFC North football, you have to love the Detroit Lions. And just looking at their running backs, obviously, with Montgomery and Gibbs, they're basically averaging five yards a carry. That's it. And they don't get a million carries each. They each get, you know, kind of in the teens, it looks like. Yeah, exactly. It's not like they're just pound, pound, pound. They're not doing Derrick Henry. No. And then Lamar Jackson running. But, I mean, to me, one of my favorite drives of the entire season was the first Monday night game, wasn't it? The... I think it was a night game. Might have been Sunday night when they beat the Rams in overtime, and yes. they didn't run. They didn't throw the ball once in OT. That's right. They just handed it off over and over and over again. If you're an old school football coach, walls loving guy, it's handed off like that. It was magical. It was because why they could still stop has it. value. It's it still, was so alpha. It has value. And and look again. Speaking of 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 yards per attempt, that's Jones. Right, five games, seventy one carries, three hundred fifty yards, averaging four point nine yards. Yes, a carry. That's. I think that's basically a yard more than we were getting a year ago. Yep. That adds up. That's important. None of it means all you that you can win by doing nothing but running at all. It's that there's still a place that one helps to play off of the other. And I would submit to you in terms of the idea of if the goal is winning, then you shouldn't be necessarily obsessed with those incredibly fancy receiving numbers for JJ, you should be concerned about other numbers that help give you a better chance to actually uh, win the ball game and maybe, perish the thought, turn the ball over a little less. Now, we all assume that the QB, who has been a turnover machine in his career, is starting to figure that out here and being a little bit more careful. Uh, we've seen a couple moments, though, where it feels like he's reverting. And, and oddly, I think this is a big game for him because... The sense of it is we're still happy with him. Hard to argue with the results, but it feels like he's coming back to the pack a little bit. No pun intended. So this is a great opportunity for him to double down on. No, I'm not. I, I maybe the last couple of games, second half, I haven't been quite as sharp, but I'm going to come back strong with a statement game here. It's easier for him to do that if he has a legitimate running threat. No matter how many yards JJ has been able to get against them. Um, so I, this is a, it's another good story angle that makes this game interesting. What does Sam Darnold do with it? What do the Vikings, what does the chief basket, uh, uh, offensive mind brain wizard, uh, KOC, what's he asking him to do with it? Right. Is it throwing the ball 62 yards down the field on every other play? And how different is it now that Aiden Hutchinson we know isn't going to play? Mm-hmm. You forget. I mean, I don't know if you forget, but seven and a half sacks. He's like yeah. the heartbeat of that defense. I know they have a couple other guys that they he's like. He's the defensive player of the year to this point. And yeah, now he would over. be. Yeah. Besides Gink. Well, Gink's right there. Yeah, yeah no doubt. Now, now Gink's going to be in that mix. Right. So how does that change everything that you wanted to do or how thought about How did we get doing? less healthy during the bye? I heard you talking about that with who? Chip yesterday when I, I was, was driving around? It's bizarre. We got more yes. people. I mean, the bye is supposed to heal you, and we got more people out after the bye than we did before the bye. So, it's and strange. And Cashman's turf toe guy? Yep, and he's officially out. And he's going to be out. There's there's concern. He's going to be out for a while. Tur- you know, turf toe's tricky. That's you had it several times in tennis, didn't you? Probably. Yeah, you probably did. I, I got it out. Yeah, you got it out. Um, 
And is it didn't uh, who's our sack master? Who's our um, our defensive lineman who's got already four, five, six sacks? He now has, is is showing up on the injury. You're report. talking about Patrick Jones. Patrick Jones, yes. isn't he? Yes. Now he was full today. Okay. He was a full participant today. Or are we just playing possum here? Well, uh, not on not on Cashman. He's out. No, like Cashman's out. Yep. I mean, obviously knew, um, and a Caleb's out. We know that. Yeah. But you've got yeah, Jones is questionable. Harrison Phillips is questionable with his shoulder. And then Hawkinson yeah. and Jones, the two that we've been watching all week, are also questionable. Uh, let's make this the bottom of the hour pause. Prepare for Carl Gerbschmidt for, with the predictions segment. Are we doing the Gerby Lock of the Week this week? We are for Vikings-Lions tickets. Are you serious I'm for this Sunday? Dead serious. Not for next year. Not for next year. Not for, not for the playoffs. The game at Ford Field, Week oh 18. Oh, my God. This is great. This Sunday. Tickets for this Sunday. U.S. Bank Stadium. Oh, that's... Gerby they, Lock of the Week. they got to be hard to come by at this point. So that's a nice little uh, re- added bonus reason for you to want to come back. segment on the fan brought to you by continental diamond now to help you break down this week's games here's your favorite nfl wonk dan barrero this is very welcome breaking news sean salisbury added to a very distinguished lineup for the day He will join as soon as we uh, get this idiot out of the way. Wow. Move on for the rest of our lives to get to something a little, with a little, little bit more substance. Did I, I'm sorry. Is that a bad way to start our That's conversation right there? Yeah. With Carl Gerbschmidt. Carl, you're not offended, are you? Carl? Wonder if he's gone now. <laughs> Think he's mad? Hello? Carl? Carl Gerbschmidt? It's a new one. Oh there. That. Carl? Hello? 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 You're not you're Hello? not you're not offended, are you? By what? Nothing. 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 You obviously didn't hear it, so that's even better. Hey, welcome back to the show. Yeah, thanks for that, Dan. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Uh it's a beautiful day. I've got a karaoke question early. I am looking at uh, at PackerFanConnections.com. There is a it's PackerFanConnections.com. <laughs> okay. Most popular get together site in well, all the what? You got this karaoke thing going, and you got already a lot of people signed up. And I, I noticed scrolling down here, I noticed scrolling um, down where on the well, you got like a list the uh, set online. List. The set list apparently is is what it is. You You're got, not supposed to be seeing that. Hold on. Well, it's, you, I told you it's not for everybody. It's private. Well, it's ain't, ain't private now. No, it's right there. So this is the schedule. Here's you don't need that, Randy. Oh yeah. Well, here's Yoho's asking me this stuff. Yoho, what, what do you need? What, do you, what am I? I'm a Yoho. What is a, what is a Yoho? Be. Yahoo, you mean? Could be. Yeah. Well, no. It, 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 at ten twenty five, it lists Randy G and to be determined singing "My Boo," Usher, and Mary Jane Blige. That's a banger. That's I think a, it's a banger. so. I think it's Mary J Blige. I don't think there's a Ain. Uh, did I say... Oh, no, you, I didn't know. you I read just, it correctly. Yeah, I read it correctly, yeah. I don't think it's... it's Mary t- J. Blige, stupid. I told you to get someone to check it. I think you misspelled Blige, too. But in any case, um, why is it to be determined? Is Randy G. having trouble getting a date? Yeah, we, not all the slots on the ladies' <laughs> site are full yet. Yeah, because so you don't have... still opportunity. Because you don't have enough ladies. There's a lot of TBDs, it looks like. Not a lot, no. I'm going to say it's less than... Less than twenty percent. <laughs> that's a lot. Well, that's a lot. No, people can sing twice if they want. If you hear somebody that you like singing with, is, is, you can ask them to come sing with you. Is Randy a good uh, a singer? But we don't know if that's Randy Gerbschmidt or not. Well, who else is it going to be? What other Randy G is it going to be? Who's Ed G? Is that a Gerbschmidt? That's not. Everyone who's got last name with G is not a Gerbschmidt. Are we sure? I'm 100% in, the, sure. in this scenario. So you've yeah. got here's I mean there's some good there's some banger songs. You've got there's some yeah, there's some, and there's some great stuff on this. You've got <laughs> Christian W and Xavier S singing You've Lost That Love and Feeling, the Righteous, yeah, Righteous Brothers song. Brothers song. That's, that was in Top Gun. Remember when Tom Cruise sang that with the guy who died? Yeah, I Oh, spoiler alert. Man, there's a lot of people. Oh, I have 
seen the movie. It's, it's not Christian movie. Watson, is it? I uh, bet your favorite part was the volleyball. Who's Dave K? What's that? Who's Dave K? I don't know everybody's name, Dan. Because he and Yvette F are doing "I Got You, Babe," the Sunny and Cher classic. That's, That's topical. A classic. Uh, really bringing in the young folks with that <laughs> well, one. Well, you gotta mix. You gotta mix and match a little bit. Have you never heard of a classic, Jordan? I have. Yeah, come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. This is this bangers all over this. List. I'm afraid to even name some of these songs. I. I, I what do you mean? Well, I don't know if they're are they all on the up and up. Are they all? Well, eight oh five to eight nineteen. You go from defying gravity from Wicked to WAP. With two ladies singing there. Yeah, with two ladies singing WAP, which we can't say on the show what that stands for. I think it's for. WAP, I think it's uh, It's called. not that. Oh, and yeah. Then a, and then a whole new world. What? Bubba what are you R and Nothing. Forget TBD. about it. Forget about it, Carl. You don't want to go down this road. Freak on a leash. How about uh, Paul D. and Denise oh, A? Yes. Uh, there's lots of it. Heavy metal is an under, under kind of a underpopulated part of karaoke, I've heard. Freak on a Leash. Do I know that song, Archie? I don't think you do. I don't think that it's comes a great up song. on your uh, I had to look solo it up. speaker. And that's by Korn? Yeah. Freak on a Leash. You know what's a good song? Is it an S&M song? Is that the idea? I don't think so, Dan. Uh, oh, okay. You know what's a good song? What's that? Is, uh, I had not spent a lot of time with Disturbed before. <laughs> This is good. You like this? Don't play this more than 30 a, seconds, please. This is a please. karaoke version. Okay, so we can play this one, do you think? I think so. That's what they say. That's it. Melissa will light the this is night a, on fire. This is a banger. Oh, you're doing it again. It is? <laughs> so, uh, it looks like... Uh, at, uh, at the, <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, you got, I don't do you, know the rest of it. You have a I don't know that part. Sounds like you got a hernia problem. Yeah, why well, think the guy in Disturbed does have a hernia problem. Yeah, it's, uh, that wouldn't surprise me. So it looks like at the end of it, everybody is going to sing, this is a shock, Bang the Drum All Day by your yeah, guy. Yeah, it was requested by too many people, so we just had a group sing. Yeah. That sounds really, uh, this is a very eclectic Oh, there's lots of new songs music. in here. Yeah, there's a lot of everything. Like that Shallow by Lady Gaga and the other guy. But then you got That's any. Bradley Cooper. Okay. That's a great song. I never that, and you know you got to be a pretty good singer to sing that. So, song. Bretina B. Is yeah. there actually someone named Bretina? Yeah. Is that a common Wisconsin name? name? Yeah. Are any of these Blake Moore? Because I, I see Brett B. a lot <laughs> on this list, and I know no, he's been. No, I don't know if there's more than one Brett B. Well, is he also there's Bretina? There's more than one Brett. Yeah, but that's normal. There's an Amon. I'm not see. I'm not. Oh, now that's my nephew. Okay, so yes. we'll, all right. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, I'm not sure. They're doing that. They're doing one of those rap songs. Yeah, regulate. That's a great song. I, yeah, that's a banger. Yeah, that's yeah, it's really good. I just don't know that I saw coming a song from Annie. Get your gun. <laughs> I, I'm going to say I I didn't have that on. Have my you bingo not ever card. heard that song? No, I have. I just didn't. anything you can yeah, do, yeah. I can do it's, better. It's a banger. We're There's the no Packers, question. and we're better than you. But you don't, you guys don't even know who That's sang it song. because you 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 don't have the name. You just have the name of the music. Do you know if Sunshine L is that one of Vern's actors? I don't think so. Okay, I just you don't hear a lot of sunshine. Yeah. Well. Uh, by the way, when is the uh, when's when's the event? When's the? Not telling you. Why not? None of your damn business. It's not free entertainment for you. It's for the people who are you know being part of the service. We're not here to entertain you. Well, no, but you're still using my likeness because next to that that's list not of songs, you, Dan. that's number you got, one. That guy's smiling. You got and the. You and, don't ever smile. I'm not even smiling. I'm. I, I don't know what I'm doing, but I do. I can. Tell you what the woman to my immediate right appears to be doing. She appears to be very interested in something well, on the floor. <laughs> is that Sunshine L? I don't know. Maybe it is. Oh, could she be singing? I don't know. It looks like she's singing there. Yeah, she's doing something there. There's no question about that. Well, she's got the right colors that, sorry, on. Anything you can do, I can do better. Green and gold. With, and it looks like she's wearing like a, a championship wrestling belt <laughs> of some sort. Wait, wait, I'm stop. just saying. I don't know. I'm just. It's just so bizarre. Um, this is an eclectic night, though. It's it an eclectic is. Mix, for, the for mix sure. of musically is about as 
B-52s are in here. We, Kid we Rock and Cheryl Crow. We entertainment. John Travolta <laughs> and Olivia Newton-Shine. You're the one that I want. You are the one, honey. That's a great song. It is a very good song. Uh, Don't Go Breaking My Heart. That's a great, another <laughs> Elton great Elton John song. and the late, great Kiki D. I think she's dead. Or I'm not she sure lying. that's the one I'd walk off on before banging the drum all day. Yeah. I think yeah, you got some order issues. There's a special version of Hill Street Blues, which is normally not a vocal. I thought that was an, yeah, an instrumental. So what are you, how are you going to turn that into a vocal? Uh, the, the people who have written special lyrics for it. Oh. Is there still time if a woman is a listening to this? People to, what's that? Is there still time if there's a woman listening to this that wants to fill in some of the of TBDs? Of course Yes, absolutely. PakistanConnections.com. You need, you need more women. Because sure. I'm thinking about the opportunity to sing Picture by Kid Rock and Cheryl Crow with Kenny W. And <laughs> at 943, what an opportunity for a lucky woman out be there. Be emotional, I think is what it would or be. Or my I boo with Randy. Is something wrong with that? No, nothing. I'd, I go just, for, I'd go for the one with Randy. Cause, you know. Or Endless Love with Edgy. Or yeah. I've had the time of my life with Brett Mick. <laughs> you do have a lot of TBDs in here. And they're all love songs. Yeah. It's like, who's going to show up and just sing A Whole New World with Bubba Har? <laughs> well, you don't know. Bubba might be Bubba, quite a swordsman. You, know, yeah. well, you don't know anything about Bubba Har. No. Do you? I don't know anything about Aaron J, who's available to sing Don't You Want to Stay by Jason Aldean and Kelly Clarkson. I'm not sure this is Maybe the way. Maybe he's a country fan. I don't know. Bubba Har with A Whole New World? Why wouldn't that's a great song? It's a great song. I'm that's not sure. That's a cartoon. That's from a cartoon. I don't, I'm not sure who Bubba's Jasmine's going to be. I guess that's my only concern. What is uh, nothing but a G thing about? Right, so it's Dr. Dre and Yeah, Dog. what's it about? Yeah. I, I don't know. It's I don't know all the meanings of the uh, song. Gargi, do you know that one? Uh, it Kind of. I don't know if we should talk about it. It's a good song, though. It's okay. a great yeah. song. It's got There's a good. There's nothing out here that isn't great. Well, There's one I've never heard of before. The one at nine or one p.m. It's that's I had not heard of that. Puritanical before. punishment beating, and the group is the is Napalm Death. Oh my god! There's what no the openings hell? for that one. I'd worry about Razor B, one yeah. of the singers on that one. I'd never heard that. We're looking. I think right now they're trying to find that in a karaoke version. Yeah, <laughs> I good bet. luck. Yeah, you have West Side Story represented here, the musical as well. Yeah. Wally yeah. F and Please. Regina uh, R. That's yeah. a sad song. It's an extremely that's sad like song. One of them, I think one of those is dying at that point. Uh, you think you're right, actually. Yeah. Well, yeah. things got ugly between the Sharks and the Jets, man. That's what well, happens. That's what happens. Yeah. You, know? you, you, you can't take stuff so seriously. No, apparently. Uh, well, you shouldn't, but a lot of people, unfortunately, do. Uh, what else do we need to get? Before we get to picks here, this, what else? By the way, this said, I it wasn't even going to talk about this, so that's fine. I, I'll put my other stuff on hold. Well, you're, you're making a, people all. You're making people stay the whole night to try to win a $500 prize and take a group picture, according to the description here. Let's see, if you want the prize, you want you to stick around, you know. It's, this is, look, it's not easy getting a hold of a bar for an evening, you know, because you got to kind of guarantee that people are going to show up and drink. And this way, I figured they'll show up and drink. Keep us posted who ends up with Bubba, will you? I don't think it's any of your business. I can't. <laughs> If you guys want to know what's going on, then sign up. Well, you guys are both married. I think you got to have you. Do you have chaperones around? Because I think some things might get a little dicey. What's that? What do you mean chaperones? What? What? what how? What, what sort of interference do you want them to be running? Well, I just, I just get a little worried about some of these folks that might be brought together here, and it, it might why? get a little bit. Everybody's a grown up. Yeah. Well, now I'm not sure. They, in in theory, yes. I'm not sure in practice whether that's the case. Why? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I just, I I'm worried about, fine. I'm worried about you having some legal, you know. I'm not worried about it. Okay. All right. If you're happy, well, I'm. I've been told that we have very low uh, your exposure. On little this. exposure? Okay. All right. I'll take your word for it on it if you say so. Are there some already married couples in here or are the last initials um, just. I saw, it looked like a couple, but I, I don't, it's hard for me to tell. Like Clay Y what? and Phil Y or those brothers? I, it could be brothers. Are, are you going to have any celebrities at this thing? Uh, I yeah, I am not prepared to say, but I think so. <laughs> That's a no. No, no it's one, a yes. It's a no. I'm that, not telling you because well, it's none of your business. Well, but aren't you trying? Why to, do you guys all feel a need? Because you want to something you you mocked and ridiculed, and it's being obviously it's very successful, and 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 well, you just 
Uh, you need more. You need more people. So I would think you'd want to announce. You want you count them up? Who? Yeah, that place is full. <laughs> well, you got a lot, a lot of, of TVDs. Lot of I'm too. just saying. Yeah, they're not Gershmits. Okay, there's Mark, only two people. Mark and Karen singing Lady A. What's that? That's got to be Mark. That's not my Mark. That's not my brother Mark. Okay, that's just a coincidence. You know what would be cool for Although celebrity? Although he would be really good. He's got a kind of a deep baritone voice. He does? It's a little deeper than mine is. Um, and he's a great singer. I think by the way, it's, Al- it's Alicia kinda, Keys. Like show tunes. It's Alicia Keys with Usher, by the way, for my boo, if you want Randy to be really specific. Mary oh. J. Blige has nothing to do with it. It's not Mary J. Blige? No, it's Alicia Keys, according to our system. Randy, I thought it was Mary got, Jane Blige. Up a number of times here. I'm not going to let you do it anymore. Okay. Who's uh, Temple of the Dog? I don't know. What what group is that? What kind of music does Temple of the Dog play? Temple of the Dog. Hunger Strike is the su- is the tune. Sounds like a, a kind of a rock and roll tune. I liked. Uh, I was always a big Human League fan. Don't you want me? Great song back in the day. Yeah, that's kind of a it's kind of a new wave sort of thing. That's maybe. very true. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Uh, can we? I, get- I that's what you kind of rock out to, Dan. Uh, I'm more of a 60s, that 70s guy. Kinda, but, you know, yeah. uh, you know, the, like Tears for Fears. <laughs> yes, me. Kind of like everybody I, wants there was to rule the world. There were two songs. Is already doing it. Yeah, they had they had two good songs. I, I, I they had two bangers. Yeah, Tears for Fears. That was it. I don't remember much else, to be honest with you. But I'm. I think there's some highlights on here. I think that singing that Wicked song. Have you ever heard that song? Yeah, it's way too often. Yes, Defying Gravity is electric. Oh, it just it gives you goosebumps. It does. Right at intermission yeah. too. Do you have a dress code for this thing? Well, I think you know. Again, dress to impress. Whatever that That's means. That's what I would say. Okay. Trust. Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton. I didn't even I'm see not that. Doing any jokes? That's there. pretty good. Uh, by the way. Yeah. Can we get to the, to the games here? Because we're running I, out of time. I think that's the whole reason I'm here, Dan. Um, do you want to do the lock of the week first, or is it related? No, nope, I want to do it last. All right, we'll do it last. Uh, Garzy, with, I guess, in this case, Blakemore making the picks, is now a dominant 13-5. and five. He went 3-0 and oh last week. I was 1-2. and two. I'm at 9-9. Nine and nine. Uh, Gerby also went 3-0. and oh. So he is at... Um, I'm catching up. I, Eight and I kind of had other things in my mind. I think I got job by the officials here, but that's okay. I'll let it go. In any case, let's start with um, Ravens Bucks. Is that the Sunday night game? Did you say or Monday night? I think that might be Monday night. I'll double check though. That is uh, a nice little matchup in Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. The high flying Ravens are favored by three point five points over the Bucks. Carl. Yeah, the thing is. That- it's a, it's another one of those things where you could kind of go either way with it, but I think you got the most dominant statistic is that Baltimore is seven and one in uh, straight up in its last eight games on the road. So I think you kind of go got to go with Baltimore. You going with the Ravens? Yeah, uh, they're flying high. They've got now a, a, a legitimate running back again. The running game does matter. Tampa Bay, they're kind of up and down, are they not? Yeah. Last week they. Weren't they in New Orleans? And, of course, New Orleans is a mess. Didn't they score 50 in New Orleans? 51-27. Yeah. Um, three and a half. It's in Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay. I'm going to take the Bucks to cover. Uh, Ger- uh, Garzi? I agree with everything Gerby said about the Ravens. They're rolling right now. Derrick Henry is an absolute monster. We know about Lamar, so I will take the Ravens. Uh, next, we've got Packers at home. Uh, taking out oh, the t- I just said I was okay to put the package. Yeah, well, I did we, last week, too. We, 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 you whined so much about it. And yeah, you, uh, of course, that... Uh, Brett was there Garcia last week. had nothing to do with yeah, that. I would have, though. Packers are favored by two and a half over the Texans at home, the team that the uh, Vikings knocked off a few weeks ago. Carl? It's not going to be easy game. Ooh. Houston is not a joke, and they're not. And, the, you know, they're f- five and one straight up the last six games. I would much rather be picking the over the under in this one, but I think because I think we're going to win. But I'm worried about that extra half a point, so I'm a little scared about that. Um, but I think we will win this game because I think we can stop Houston's running game because I don't think it's going to be that good. So I think we will take this one and we will beat Houston by more. I mean, I miss ought to beat Houston, so I guess that anybody can. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll beat them. Green Bay will uh, cover. Uh, Gersey. 
If you ever go to Houston, <laughs> got to walk right, got to keep your hands deep in your pocket and your gun it's not belt in tight. Houston, it's in Green Bay. I know, but I just wanted to play the sound bite for sound Bill bite. Walton, yeah. and I'm taking the Texans to cover and Ooh, probably win. Interesting. Uh, last but certainly not least, what should be a primetime game or certainly a 325 game, Vikings hosting the undefeated Vikings hosting the Lions. The line now down to a uh, Vikings as a 1.5 point favorite. Carl? Well, I've been doing a little research on this. I, I, you know, I listened to the Friday football, what you call it, because I was in Hudson this morning. The Feast? Yeah, and so I listened to some of that. What a bunch of crock that goes. Those guys are absolutely out of their minds. They, it literally, they're just so pathetic. There's both of those Pauls. They're just bad. <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, I do better. like wings, though. So, uh, Minnesota, congratulations. You're 5-0 and straight up in your last five games because that's because you're 5-0. and uh, And But the thing here is Detroit is 5-0 and against the spread last five games playing Minnesota. And I hate to break it to you, but there's always a time when the bubble bursts and it starts to things start to happen that should have been happening the whole, the whole time. You all have won the Super Bowl in your own minds. You already had your parade. You won the trophy. It's like you all said it's, that's over the greatest team in the history of football. I heard it. I heard you talking like that. But you know what? Reality is coming and it's coming on Sunday. Oh. You can't stop Detroit. The, the, the lines of Detroit are so much better than yours are. They're not even funny. It's like, you, and you, yeah, maybe your Jefferson will get like 2 million yards, but you lose every time that happens. You cannot stop Detroit. They're going to run all over you. I don't know that Detroit will even have to punt during this game. So the total is indeed going over, but it's all Detroit. Detroit will cover this easy. Does it trouble you at all, Carl, that the Lions' victories have come against the Rams, Arizona, Seattle, and an overrated Dallas club? And, in fact, they lost at home to Tampa Bay? Do you, do you think maybe that they really haven't been tested the way they will be tested on Sunday at the People's if, Stadium? You don't, if you think somehow that Minnesota is a greater test than Dallas is, you should, you should go over and have lunch with the two Pauls. Okay, you know, I can just see you guys, all your home is sitting around with your yeah. little happy little Helga horns on, et cetera, et cetera. You're, you're delusional. Delusional. Uh, so you're saying you're sticking with your pick. I am saying it will not even be close. Minnesota's not going to win, therefore Detroit is going to win, but Detroit's going to kill you. The I mean, Vi it's not. It's even close. The Vikings will lose for the first time on uh, Sunday. I was trying to challenge them, maybe to can get them to reconsider. I don't think it's going to be a blowout by any means. I'm worried about the Jones factor. I, we're we're picking, picking this game not knowing whether he's actually going to play. Officially listed as questionable. I'm going to take the Lions to um, continue what's lately been a domination of this Purple franchise. Uh, real quickly, because we have to get to the lock and then Sean Salisbury. Oh, that's right. I'm, take, I'm taking the Vikings. Last but not least, lock of the week time. It's Carl Kerbschmidt. <laughs> <laughs> Lock of the week. And I remember, this is for tickets, a pair of tickets to see Vikings Lions clash on Sunday, high noon, right here on the fan. Use the hashtag Gerby Lock of the Week on Twitter with whatever Mr. Gerbschmidt's lock is. Carl? Yeah, I, I feel bad because if you win this, you have to go watch your team get killed. It is it's going to be painful, and, and you, you're going to walk away feeling bad. And, and I feel bad that I have to send you there. But you know what makes me feel good? What's that? What makes me feel really good is that you, you do hashtag Gerby Lock of the Week, and you say, Detroit will win and cover against Minnesota. That is the biggest lock on the NFL schedule this week. I Period. Did. End of sentence. And I have not lost a lock of the week all year long. I wonder how hard that will be for Vikings fans to type in. But, well, I, but on the other out, hand, you know? if they do type it in, as because that would be accurate, they do get a, pair, a chance to see to see their favorite team play. They may disagree with you and think that they will see a victory and maybe even storm the field. Then they're hypocrites. Uh, we got to go, Carl. We got a very busy schedule. Go Sauce, back it. Best of luck to uh, Randy. Yeah, finding so, a TBD. Uh, Gerb Schmidt lock of the week. That's the hashtag, correct? Gerby lock of the week. Gerby lock of the week. Yep. I apologize. That's easier. And uh, you're automatically in a contest to win a pair of Vikings-Lions tickets for Sunday.
Uh, Sean Salisbury generally joins us on Thursday. He has some uh, scheduling issues, but he's come through for, oh, I guess I should get him out of here, for today. So he's going to join after a brief pause. We'll get his view of this uh, nice little matchup and more next.